Yes, people. Josh Hart, Chase Change Boxing, we're back. Uh, today, again, I'm here to talk about the weekend we've just had in boxing. So, Saturday, we saw Boxer in Birmingham, first of all. Uh, before I actually start talking about that, uh, I hope people are actually enjoying these discussion type videos where I just sit here and talk. I'm starting to try and look at getting some like, boxers on as guests instead. Uh, so, like, having them to talk boxing as well. And not just interview them, if you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, that's what I want to say. Obviously, I'm not done with having guests. Um, I've just been obviously doing the work for the other channels and stuff. You know how you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, boxer today. Um, let's just you know go through the cards. So first of all, we saw Danny Quartermain against Christian Lopez Flores. Uh, I just missed the start. I missed the first round. I think I don't know why the fuck stuff's popping up on my screen. Yeah, I just missed the first round. But uh, it was a good performance. It was very solid from Quartermain. Um, and yeah, no, he did the job. Uh, stopped him with two seconds left in the fight. He brought a very good set of fans. You know what? The fans really did turn out on the night. I know it didn't see him in the main event. But if you look, watch the undercard, the fans turned out in Birmingham. Fair fucking play. Uh, but yeah, solid performance. Got the job done. Don't know what his record actually is. Oof. 9-0 and now. Not bad. Um, yeah, then we saw uh, the rematch. Corey Gibbs versus Jimmy first. Uh, I've actually interviewed Jimmy before. Um, I only interviewed Corey last week for International Boxing News. Uh, both very nice people. Uh, and I'm, I really, really did. Uh, my heart I, my heart went out to Jimmy after the fight. Um, I know he was in good spirits and everything. Uh, but I did feel I, I was a little bit upset for Jimmy. But fair play to Corey. Uh, good fight from both. Uh, Jimmy was a bit flat. Never really got going, did he? Um, Corey did the job. Good to see him get back up to you know he's up and running again now. You know realistically, in the politest way possible, Jimmy First is never going to be a world champion. He's forty two now. I don't really think he'll ever see world level, and I'm sure he won't mind me saying that. If he does, I'm extremely sorry, Jimmy. Um, but yeah. Whereas I think Corey does. He is young. He is young. Uh, how old is he? What twenty nine? I want to say. Uh, yeah, 29 years old, 18 and 1. He does need to start really pushing himself. I'd say with that type of record, you need to be looking at pushing yourself up there now. Um, but yeah, no, solid solid performance from Corey Gibbs, though. Uh, Gum Shield actually fit this time. Um, and I'm sure both will be back. I'm sure Jimmy's not done. Uh, I'm sure he'll be back in the ring soon. I'm sure Corey will be back. I'm sure Corey wants to have an active year. Um, so I think we'll see both of them back soon. Then after that, to close off the YouTube sequence of the card, we saw Shakan Pitters versus Joel McIntyre. Uh, it was a good fight. Uh, Shakan Pitters just a bit of a fucking piss wipe, really. Just sort of rolled him over. Did the job. About it. Yeah. Uh, good, good. Yeah, again, it's good to see Shakan Pitters get back to winning ways, isn't it? But not much to say for that one. There isn't a lot. Um, but it was good. It was solid. Um, then opening the main card, we saw a really good fight in Sean McComb versus Casey Benjamin. Um, that fight was really good. Um, obviously Sean McComb came away with unanimous decision victory. Um, I thought it was the right call. Um, yeah. I was actually surprised to see him get the, the, the nod, though. Um, you know, Casey Benjamin... Brum man, fighting in Brum. Sean McComb, the champion, but away fighter. Do you know what I mean? And it does give me a bit of a bit of, a bit of faith when looking at judges in other places. Obviously, you know, in two weeks' time, we see Katie Taylor versus Chantal Cameron. Fingers crossed I can get Jamie Moore on watch one more time before that. Um, just have a final talk. I want to try and get him on later this week. Uh, I'm not saying that's guaranteed, but I'm going to try my best to get him back. Um, but yeah. Sean McComb did the biz. He did the business. He got a, got a good performance in. Um, defended his belt, moving 16 and 1. Solid. Very solid. Were points where Casey Benjamin was looking good, though. And it was a very, it was a good fight. It was a very good fight. I, I'd say maybe the fight of the night. Um, although a fight that is very much up for the fight of the night as well was um, Tyler Denny versus McCauley McGowan. Fuck me. That fight could not have been any closer. I don't really think you can say it was a robbery that McGowan didn't get the win. I think all you can say is that it was just unlucky that he didn't get the win. Uh, I'm not saying it's a robbery. It could have went either way. Um, 
Happy to see Tyler Denny continue this brilliant run of form that he's on now. I've got the E, I think it's the EEU uh, on box check. It says the EBU external middleweight title, which is vacant. Um, yeah, good to see Tyler pick that up. Uh, a very good fight as well. Tyler didn't look his best, um, but he, he got the job done. He did what he needed to do. Um, moving on, we saw then. The showman, the man who's getting a lot of stick that I do not agree with, Ben Whitaker. Um, ben Whitaker, right? Okay, let's just make let's just point out the obvious things. He's a showman, and he's doing a showman type thing against his prospects. But that being said, they do need to fast track him. I'd say not fast track him, but up the level and up the level fast. Uh, because Jordan Grant's no fuck about. Yeah, let's just quickly look at Jordan Grant's record. So he's faced. Tommy Fury, John Doherty, Aaron McKenna, and uh, Thingy, Ben Whitaker. And out of all the people he's faced, I'd say Ben Whitaker's probably done the most damage to him. Um, yeah, it was just quite sad what we saw, really, wasn't it? It was just a bit of a beatdown. Um, don't get me wrong, game as ever. Um, but yeah, not the toughest of nights for Ben Whitaker. I would like to see him have a tough fight. Uh I think people need to stop giving him this stick as well. At the end of the day, they said they said it on the little broadcast and they said it in the arena as well. Hate him, love him, you're going to watch him. And you are. You are going to watch Ben Whitaker. And don't take the piss, you are. He's phenomenal. Not phenomenal in boxing ability, though. You can see there's something there. There's something very good there. Um, and I think he is destined for the biggest of things. And I do want to see him compete not compete for a title, but push for titles. I know he's only 3-0, but I want him to have an active year. Get out, you know. Re he was relatively good tonight. Uh, not tonight, Saturday night. There's talks him being on... He said he's on the Eubank card, but that's uh, getting pushed back. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so, yeah. He's going to he's gonna be out then, June 17th, but it's getting pushed. Um, I, I reckon we can see him three, four times maybe this year. Another three or, three or four more times. So they can at least get up to, you know, 6, 7 and 0 by the end of the year. Um, I think that's what I'd like to see for him. Um, but yeah, solid performance. Looked very good. Entertained the crowd uh, from the ring walk to the final bell. Uh, moving on after that, we then saw Lauren Price versus Kirsty Bavington. Just a bit of a fucking steamroll again from Kirsty. Not Kirsty, but Kirsty Bavington got steam. Not steamrolled, but just... It was just a bit easy, wasn't it? Lauren Price, what was it, what? It was a hundred to ninety two, won it, or hundred to ninety even. What am I on about? Hundred to ninety. Um, but yeah, again, not much to say. <laughs> not much to say. Uh, then we had the main event in Bwatsi versus Pavel Stepien. Um, it was a bit boring, wasn't it? A bit shit. Uh, Bwatsi did the biz. He did what he needed to do. Got himself up and running again after a very straight in twelve months. Um. And yeah, it was just good to see him get back in the ring. Uh, I really want to see him push, though, for either the world title now or a massive domestic fight with either Anthony Yard, Callum Smith, or Dan Aziz, Orland and Arthur, anyone. Craig Richards, he could, you know, you could chuck him in the mix. There's so many fighters in this light heavyweight division, and that's just the UK. Obviously, Callum Smith's out of the way now because he's got better BF. Um, which I spoke about with Spencer Oliver. Again, you can see that on international boxing news. Not here. You'll see videos like that on here soon. Uh, I just realised I do look very white on the camera today as well. Apologies. Uh, don't really know how to fix the lighting. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. Solid solid performance. It's a shame the arena was packed, like emptying out very, 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 very fucking like, quick into the main event. People weren't entertained. And that's the thing. I think they're putting the... The right undercard, but the wrong main event. Um, yeah, Boatsy and Nicoli now. That's, yeah, Eddie Hearn's got to be laughing. He let those two go to boxer and brought in Sonny Edwards, who's obviously not fought yet. Jack Catterall's fighting in two weeks. Um, and by the way, Matt, we'll talk about this again soon, but Matt, you want to fucking roll with these signings, aren't they? But yeah, he offered Boatsy and Nicoli, and they've both come back to two fucking stinky performances, but it's also two performances where they've been out for a year. Uh, obviously, Akoli's now got a big fight against Billum Smith on May 27th. Uh, I would be watching, but Lee Wood's fighting. And you you people know me. 
I love Lee Wood. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, but what I see, big fight, get it on as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Uh, we also then saw Canelo versus Ryder. Or we can say it's fair fucking play to Ryder for sticking about the whole 12 around there. He was getting fucking pasted, wasn't he? And that's not even a fucking joke. He was getting absolutely pasted in there. Um, nose broken, knocked down, swallowing blood, couldn't properly breathe. He could have easily stayed down in round five and let the fight be dead, done, dusted. And he decided to get back up and fucking battle on. Fair fucking play. Uh, I know, you know, not, you don't necessarily celebrate the loser. And I'm not celebrating the fact that he lost. I'm celebrating the fact he's a warrior. And, you know, the fact that, yeah, a lot of fighters would have quit in that moment. And that's not a joke. A lot of fighters would have gave up and would have said, mm, no, I don't want this anymore. But he wanted to stick in there. And while he didn't get the win, I think, how old is how old, John Ryder? 34. Not even that old, if you know what I mean. Um, obviously, he's had, what, 38 fights now. Uh, I still think there's something in there for him. I still think there's a lot of big fights made for him. Uh, some people were saying Ryder versus Belanga for the end of the year. I see Edgar Belanga. I don't know how to say it. Is it Edgar Belanga? I know I'm on about. Man fighting uh, June 24th against Quigley. Um, again, I don't know if I'm saying the name right. I do apologise. Um, but yeah. As for Canelo, it's no secret that he's passed his best. He's passed his best. Um, where next for Canelo? There's, you know, David Benavidez. They've all rematch. There's a few different routes you can go down. Uh, I'd like to see Benavidez. I think a bit of all rematch doesn't entice anyone really. I don't think anyone's excited for it. Even at 168, I still think people would rather see um, Thingy. Benavidez. That's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Solid from Canelo. John Ryder's a fucking warrior. And yeah, looking further on into what's being said this week. Um, so when I interviewed Ben Shalom, again, for IBN, International Boxing News, uh, I asked him about Eubank Smith essentially being pushed back. And he said no. Uh, and then just today, literally just I started recording this, uh, it's out there now. Uh, the fight is not happening June 17th. And it is going to be getting pushed back uh some point in July, uh, it could be early, middle, end. No one knows. Either way, it's getting pushed back. June seventeenth is off. Liam Smith's injured, and we'll be seeing that card rescheduled. Still at the Air Arena, still Manchester, just not June seventeenth. Um, let's look at what we have got this weekend. We see Misfits, double oh seven, back. Uh, KSI versus Fournier. Um. I I I'm, I don't talk about the YouTube boxing on here, but I do watch it. I do watch you. If there's no proper boxing on, none of your traditional boxing, I watch. I watch the YouTube stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, 007. Uh, it's the it's a decent little 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 card. If you know your YouTube stuff. If you don't, then you, it, it's shit. Respectfully, it's shit. Um, and then obviously Friday night we see Ellis Zorro versus Jose Burton. I'm fucking praying that I get my press pass for it, but I don't actually know yet. Uh. Uh, if I don't get a press pass, I won't be there. And then obviously mean less content for here. And that will also mean you'll see more of these types of videos. Where I talk a lot more. But I like doing these. I like it's it's a lot easier to record. You know, I don't really prep a script. I kind of just hop in, say what's on my mind, and move on. But yeah, let's uh let me load up box rec and we'll 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 do a little rundown of that card. Uh of, of what what we've got coming up. Uh, so obviously Zara versus Burton main event. Uh, I really want Elisara to win. I'm sorry, um, but I want I want to see Elisara win. I've had Ellis, Ellis on the channel, and um, he's a top man. He's lovely man, Re lovely lovely man. And you know, class, very nice, very friendly, very willing to talk. Uh, yeah. So Elisara, Jose Burton ten rounds for WBO European cruiserweight title vacant belt at the moment uh we also see ezekiel osvaldo moderna who beat carol atalma if, if you don't know now you know he did beat carol atalma he's the man who did it on july no january january 28th 
on the Better Behave Yard card when Atoma got defeated. Carol Atama, not Moses, obviously. Just want to make that clear. Uh, he faces Willie Hutchinson. Uh, this is Willie Hutchinson's first uh, title fight at light heavyweight. Uh, I, again, had Willie, on, Willie Hutchinson. I'm not just going to say Willie because that sounds a bit dodge. Uh, we've had Willie Hutchinson on the channel. Good man as well. Very, very nice man. Um, again, I'm excited for it. We know what as we know what Ezekiel Osvaldo Moderna is about. He's good. He's game. He's got a bit about him. Uh, and yeah, he did obviously hand Carol Atama his first loss back in January. Obviously, Carol Atama is out on the card as well. Uh, we'll talk about his fight in literally a second. Um, solid fight for the WBC International. Uh, obviously, Ezekiel was the champion. Willie Hutchinson is challenging. Uh, it's gonna. I think it's a, it's a good test. It's a very very good test. Willie Hutchinson. You know, he's not been tested since he stepped up to one seventy five. So to see him have this test is good. It's same fairly sorry. This is his biggest test yet. While he's fifteen and zero, uh, you got to think three of those fights came on the box tournament in where he faced James Farrell, Jamie Smith, then Ricky Reeves, then he faced Dex Spellman, and Dex Spellman really fucking stuck it on him. What a fight that was! If you didn't watch Dex Spellman versus Alice Zorro, watch it. What a fight! Uh, then we see Carol Talma versus Khalid Great Gradia. Mm. Ten and nine with four draws, and he's he's not really. Seems to be just a good fight to get Carol Atama back in the mix. Let's just say that. Uh, I, I I do like the Atama brothers, and I do really want to see Carol get back to winning ways. Uh, only eight, only eight rounds. Uh, but it's just it's just getting him back up and running, you know. January twenty eighth wasn't a, wasn't a good night for him. Let's let's not take the piss, you know. He saw how it fucking affected Moses in the ring. Moses was gutted even after he won. Uh, then we see Chris Bork. Uh, just yeah. Six rounds and again, just getting back up and running after taking that first defeat to Mark Leach. Obviously, Chris has already came back once against Darwin Martinez, where he won by third round TKO. This isn't my knowledge, by the way. I, I still have box rec loaded here. Um, I was reading Ryan Garner. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know an awful lot about Ryan Garner. Has he fought on how many Queens ratios? He's fought on a fair few Queens ratios, to be fair. I've not really heard of him. I've heard of him, but I've not watched a lot of him. Um, but yeah, he seems to be fighting again for the first time since last July. Uh, Twelve and zero with six knockouts seems seems a good fighter. Um, yeah, he's fighting uh, Michael Sianski, uh, the guy who fucking fought Alice Junior on Twenty Four Hours Notice, or Alice Junior stepped into fight on Twenty Four Hours Notice. Uh, he's facing Israel Dufus. Or I don't know how to say his name. But obviously, Israel Dufus faced Chevron Clark in his last fight. He just got battered, really. Um, yeah. Six rounds. It's a very good test for uh, Sosianski. I don't know how to say his name. I'm really, I'm sorry. Uh, let me see. Sean Noakes, the brother of Sam Noakes. George Davey. Uh, who's, who's George Davey? Has he fought on any Queensbury shows before? Fought on one last year. Again, he seems to be someone who has four on Queen's Ray shows before. Me just lacking a bit of knowledge again. He's probably one of those YouTube like prelim kind of types of people. But yeah, and then obviously Alois Jr. uh is back in action. Alois is a very good fighter, very dangerous fighter as well. And very, very fucking young as well. Uh he's he he could really go far. Speaking to Barry Smith, he can go far. Um but yeah, that's this Friday. Misfits on Saturday. They also announced um, June 9th, we've got a uh, David Adelaide main event again at York Hall. Uh, that night, we've also got Carl Greaves show in Leicester. Uh, what other news is there that I'm missing out on? I think that's about it, people. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. If you enjoyed, do your business. Like, subscribe, kind of, all that shit. Uh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in to another little fucking waffle session. Uh, and I'll catch you tomorrow for an interview. Boom. Adios, people. Goodbye.